Hello there. My name is Dr. Ian Page. I'm a lecturer here at the Manchester University. Uh, I'm here to talk to you today about aspergillus IgG testing in the context of diagnosing pulmonary aspergillosis. Uh, there's a few things that we'd like to achieve today in terms of our goals. One is for you to know what forms of aspergillosis are associated with a positive aspergillus IgG role. Another is to be aware of the reasons for a false negative result with aspergillus IgG. And lastly, I'd like you to be able to interpret the tests in a clinical context. So why would somebody have a positive IgG test result? Well, the first thing to remember is that these tests are not perfect in terms of their sensitivity and specificity. The cutoffs for IgG tests are often set at a level that gives roughly 98% specificity. And this means that 2% of your healthy population will have a positive result. So an aspergillus IgG positive result on its own does not diagnose disease. But when you have that result together with clinical and radiological findings, then you can be confident that the patient does have their necessary disease. Which diseases can cause this? Well, chronic cavitary pulmonary aspergillosis is the one where aspergillus IgG testing is most frequently used and where it is an absolutely central test to the diagnosis of the disease. But other forms of aspergillus, uh, aspergillus disease can also have a positive test. For example, ABPA, or allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, aspergillus bronchitis, aspergillus nodules can all be associated with a positive aspergillus IgG at some time. Other forms of disease include chronic and granulomatous aspergillus rhinosinusitis, um, and also subacute and invasive aspergillosis. In these conditions, the aspergillus IgG isn't necessarily a first-line test, uh, but it can be useful in diagnosis. When somebody is recovering from an acute bout of invasive aspergillosis, they can develop a positive IgG result during the recovery phase. And when somebody has an acute community-acquired aspergillus pneumonia, they can seroconvert during the course of their illness. Now, why would somebody have a false negative aspergillus IgG result? Well, the most often case can be that somebody is immunosuppressed. And indeed, pulmonary aspergillosis is often more common in those who have immunosuppression. And the very problem that's putting them at risk of aspergillus disease can make it harder for them to develop an IgG response. Another thing that you must consider is that while most tests that are used commercially are aspergillus fumigatus specific IgG tests, aspergillosis can be caused by other conditions and other species of aspergillus. In particular, in parts of the world such as India, um, up to 20 or 30 percent of disease can be due to non fumigatus species. And in these cases, only around half of them are positive by aspergillus fumigatus IgG although specific tests for other species of aspergillus IgG response do exist, and they may be more sensitive. Lastly, it should be noted that there are many different commercial brands of aspergillus IgG tests, and none of them are 100% sensitive. However, studies have shown that 99% of cases of CPA are positive by at least one brand of test. So if the first test is unexpectedly negative, another test may be positive. Let's talk about test performance. We have here a graph showing the sensitivities of various different tests. As you can see, the results are not the same. In particular, aspergillus precipitans testing, which is the original method developing in the 1950s or so by Ochter Looney, uh, and is considered to be a mandatory diagnostic criteria for aspergillosis by some authorities. Uh, in a study performed here in Manchester, this was positive in only 50% of our CPA patients. Even when you look at the IgG ELISA test, the results are not all equal, and some tests appear to be more sensitive than others. In one head-to-head -head study in the same patient cohort, it was found that Siemens Immulite aspergillus IgG and Immunocap IgG were more sensitive, statistically significantly more sensitive than other brands such as Genesis, Dynamica, and Syrian. If you look at the sensitivity in different diseases, it's not the same. Um, as I said a moment ago, up to 99% of cases of chronic pulmonary aspergillosis are positive by one IgG test or another. But this is not the case in other conditions. In subacute and invasive aspergillosis, which occurs in patients that are often immunosuppressed, many of them will not form an antibody response. And in these cases, antigen testing, such as galactamanan or beta-glucan, might be the more appropriate test. Likewise, in patients with HIV-AIDS, uh, the disease causes immunosuppression and the rate of positivity of aspergillus IgG testing is not well described. Other conditions such as aspergillus nodules and aspergillus bronchitis 
are known to have varying antibody positivity. Case series suggests that just over half of these patients will have aspergillus IgG positivity, whereas others will not. And as we mentioned earlier, patients that have aspergillus disease caused by non-fumigita species may or may not have a possible positive aspergillus fumigita specific IgG. How should one interpret these tests? Unfortunately, there is some difficulty with selecting the correct cutoff for these tests. Recently, several studies have been done trying to identify and validate the optimal cutoff for diagnosis of chronic pulmonary aspergillosis. In some cases, these confirmed that the manufacturer's recommended cutoff was appropriate. However, in other ones, it did not. For example, the BioRAD Aspergillus IgG test has a manufacturer's recommended cutoff of 10 units per milliliter, but an independent study suggested that just 1.5 units per milliliter was the optimal cutoff. And if the manufacturer's cutoff was used, the test was much less sensitive than it could otherwise be. Other studies have looked at the cutoffs for commonly used tests by brands such as Immunocap and Bordier and have sometimes produced slightly varying results. Although in most cases these are fairly similar to each other with limited changes in the sensitivity and specificity of the test when using these similar cutoffs. Aspergillus IgG can be used to see, diagnose seroconversion in acute disease. Now, in many other diseases, the IgM test is frequently used for diagnosing seroconversion. However, in Aspergillus, there's really no published evidence that IgM testing has any advantages over IgG testing, and the presence of a newly positive Aspergillus IgG is often taken of evidence of seroconversion in a patient who has appropriate clinical and radiological features. This is especially uh, useful in acute conditions, such as acute community-acquired aspergillus pneumonia and invasive disease in immunosuppressed persons, where seroconversion not only confirms the diagnosis of aspergillus, but indicates that the person is in a relatively positive prognostic group in that they must be mounting an appropriate immune response if they are able to have a positive IgG test and therefore have a better chance of surviving the infection. Here are some images of a patient with community-acquired pneumonia. You can see here in these sequences that are taken several weeks apart that the patient initially has signs of consolidation in their upper lobe, then goes on to develop a clear cavity with pleural thickening and paracavitary fibrosis. And only several weeks down the line did they develop a positive aspergillus IgG response. So while the Aspergillus IgG test is useful for confirming the disease, it is not useful for deciding to initiate therapy because by the time the patient develops the IgG response, um, it would be too late for antifungal therapy to have a positive impact on the survival chances of that patient. These assessments therefore need to be made clinically or with the use of antigen tests such as galactomana. In conclusion, the Aspergillus IgG test is a critical test in diagnosing pulmonary aspergillosis, especially the chronic version of pulmonary aspergillosis, where it is the most sensitive test available. It should be remembered, though, that 2% of the healthy population will have a positive test, and the aspergillus IgG test on its own cannot be relied upon to diagnose pulmonary aspergillosis. But when it's present together with suitable clinical and radiological findings, it is an essential part of the diagnostic process. No single commercially available Aspergillus IgG test is 100% sensitive. And when one test isn't positive when it is expected to be so, then using another test can be helpful. Some research suggests that the traditional Aspergillus precipitation in gel test has very low sensitivity compared to modern ELISA tests. It should also be considered that Aspergillosis can be caused by species other than Aspergillus fumigatus, especially in parts of the world such as Asia. In these settings, the A fumigatus test is sometimes, but not always, positive, and specific tests for the relevant species of Aspergillus could be much more sensitive. Much work has been done recently to help identify the optimal cutoffs for Aspergillus IgG testing in chronic pulmonary aspergillosis, with the test sensitivity and specificity having been improved as a result of this work. But further work needs to be done to identify the most effective tests with the optimal cutoffs uh, for diagnosing disease in these contexts. Hopefully, in a few years' time, the test will be even more helpful than it is now. Thank you very much for your time.